Thanks so much for tuning into the Mutual Fund Show. I'm Neeraj Shah. And today we'll talk about uh, yet another topic in deep dive with Access MF, and that is uh, the topic of fund of funds. Now, viewers would remember that what we started since the last uh, four months, arguably, is once every month, uh, we get Raghav Iyengar to try and deep dive into one particular topic. We've discussed uh, the, the hybrid category in detail over the last three months. And today, having finished that conversation over three episodes, we're moving on to a new topic. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, fund of funds and the various kinds of fund of funds, the taxation, the advantages, the disadvantages, and the options thereof. A bit later on in the show, we'll also get in Nirav Panchmatya of AUM Advisors to talk about his thoughts on some of these topics and what are the options that stay before uh, an investor. Um, so without much ado, let me first get in Raghav Ayengar. Raghav, great having you. Uh, thank thanks you. So thank for you. joining in and hope all is safe. Thank you, Neeraj. All is well, uh, grace of God. And uh, we really enjoyed the last four months. I mean, I'm, I, it's just like sort of time flies. This is going to be our last, at least my last episode for 2021. And what a year this has been. <laughs> and I yeah, think we're setting the base for something much, much more heavier in 2022 is another very, very anticipated year. So yes, on that okay. happy note, let me just wish all your viewers a very, very happy new year in advance, because I hope the next time I see them, it'll be 2022. And uh, yes, yeah, so stay safe, stay happy. And uh, may 22 be a much better year as compared to 21. Yeah, hopefully on the health front, uh, even yes. more so, but more, yes. more, but on the wealth front as well, because that's what Definitely. we talk about. So, Definitely. so let's try and talk about this, Raghav. Uh, fund of funds, uh, they, uh, a lot of times these options comes out uh, it's recommended by a number of people as well more on the international investing front but even on the domestic side can you talk a bit Absolutely. about this? what are fund of funds so it's an it's fund of funds is a very interesting uh, scheme which is actually a, you know a scheme typically invests in a set of stocks or a set of bonds right and that's what we've discussed or a hybrid fund which we've been discussing over the last three four months invests in a mix of both of these a fund of fund essentially invests in an other scheme or a set of schemes so where the underlying uh, where, where the fund itself uh, goes and puts all its money into another fund or into another set of funds. Now, you would ask me, what is why Why do we need to do this? Now, if you recollect in the earlier days, uh, when the initial gold funds came out, they were they came out in the form of exchange-traded funds. Now, for investing in ETF, you have to have one, a DMAT account, you have to have a brokerage relationship. So many people said that we give us a fund which will invest into that fund. And that was actually the start of what we call the FOFs. Now, you have various types of FOFs. You have fund of funds investing in domestic equity funds. You have fund of funds investing in debt funds. You have fund of funds investing in international funds. And that's the really big innovation that's happened, especially in the last 24 to 36 months. And, and uh, uh, people like us and Axis have done a lot of work around that. So it gives you a lot of choice, Neeraj. Uh, in some sense, it's a passive fund because the fund manager as such is not really buying of our FOF is really not buying or selling the uh, the underlying stocks he's relying on somebody else to do it uh, or he's just going and buying a passive index fund where anyway the index keeps moving so it's, it's a beautifully convenient way for people who don't want to uh, you want to just go the traditional route of investing through a mutual fund scheme uh, in, in into uh, into a set of instruments which they would normally not be able to or don't want to buy directly uh, on terms of the uh, uh, what are the types i think as i said you can do it started off with gold. So, in fact, the biggest category of FOFs till very recently used to be gold FOFs. Today, you've got uh, what you call ETFs, uh, and you have all types of ETFs, as you know, and that's something that hopefully we talk about in the coming days, is exchange-traded funds. You have exchange-traded funds, which are nothing but uh, funds which are investing in a particular uh, in a particular index, right? So, you have the Nifty ETF, you have the banking ETF, you have the consumption ETF, you have technology ETFs, and these are all... The underlying funds so you have an fof which goes and buys into those funds you have an fof neeraj which actually goes and buys a combination of these things and then of course now the new uh, the new innovation which has recently come out is debt fofs so you can typically like in access mutual fund we've actually created a fund which invests in other debt mutual funds so essentially it's like a fill it shut it forget it category the fund manager essentially decides which schemes to put in uh, Lastly, of course, the really big category now, which is coming up and really, really flying is the international FOFs. So here we will just go and buy into an international fund. Right? And uh, so uh, and there again, there are various types you can do. So you have funds which invest into the NASDAQ, your funds which invest into the S&P uh, 
at, at Access, we have a fund which invests into the Schroders Global Alpha Fund, the Schroders Global Innovation Fund, and the Schroders Access, uh, the Schroders Greater China Fund. These are some of the three things that we have. But there's a whole host of things that you can create. And that's where there's a lot of innovation. Uh, why do people invest in these international funds? I think the biggest thing is that I think there is something we all suffer from something called uh, basically domestic bias, right? I think uh, home country bias is something that in all investors, because obviously you will you will put a majority of your money in what you know. But uh, the fact is that even in developed markets, like even in the US, uh, which accounts for almost 50% of the entire market capitalization of the world, uh, US investors invest almost one fourth of their money outside, right? And that's what you hear in the markets daily, FIs investing, buying, selling. Large part of that is also retail customers from other countries buying into India. And an international fund that way allows an Indian investor to go out and invest into international equities or international ideas. Uh, so there are lots, lots and lots of there are lots and lots of advantages that you have uh, by by putting money into an FOF. Uh, to conclude this, of course, because taxation is a very very important element uh, when you're investing, so you must know about this. Uh, a fund of fund is treated as a uh, the taxation is treated like a debt mutual fund, except if the underlying in funds are ETFs. Uh, let's say if I go and create a fund of funds which is going to put money only into ETFs, then I think the, you get taxed as an equity fund, which is if you hold for more than one year, 10%, less than one year, 15%. But in all other types of fund of funds, uh, uh, you have to pay like an international fund of fund, a debt fund of fund, of course, you have to, or even a fund of fund investing into other equity schemes, you have to pay tax at, uh, at debt rates, which is anything more than three years is 20% less indexation, anything less than three years is short-term capital gains, which is taxed at your uh, marginal tax rate. Uh, so that's, sorry, a uh, quick, quick five, seven minute snapshot for you, Neeraj, on the whole FOF structure. Hmm. I think uh, a, a question that might come to mind for an investor is that would a, would a fund of fund that I invest in, in turn invest into a mix of equity plus debt plus uh, other kind of funds? Or does it do fund of funds normally stick to a category? Let's say a fund of fund will stick to investments in select equity uh, funds or and does it stick to only one fund or can there be multiple funds within the fund okay that's a lovely question because that's again defined in the offer document so let's say in the schroders uh, the fund that we've launched in india the uh, access global alpha fund very clearly in the offer document we have mentioned that this fof will go and invest all its money into the schroders uh, global alpha fund internationally and uh, obviously, the regulator asks for details of that fund. Uh, obviously, they, they look at various things. They look at the parameters. They look at the size. They look at uh, the track record, et cetera, et cetera. So it is essentially defined in the offer document itself. The, the fund that we have on the debt side, uh, the Access Debt FOF, is something which we've been now uh, managing now for the last more than two years. There, very clearly, we have written that we will invest in instruments of uh, or debt schemes of domestic mutual funds, right? In fact, that scheme is unique because most of the FOFs in the debt space largely invest in their own uh, schemes. Here to give us enhanced sense of diversification, we have capped the amount of money that we will put internally into access and we put a fairly large percentage of the money into third party mutual funds. This is to make sure that the investor gets a diversification and more importantly, a different ability to play uh, you know, every fund manager has his own style of investing. We're trying to give him or her the benefit of the style and obviously also the benefit of diversification in terms of number of securities. So, yes, you can. So it's very clearly defined in the offer document itself, what it can do. Uh, okay. And so you, you can really construct anything you want, but it's it's very clearly defined. So one thing uh, as a takeaway from this, very importantly, all fund of funds are not the same. Just because they have the last three, num the name is FOF, doesn't make it the same category. In fact, it's a reasonably uh, complex category and you need to read and or understand a little more or maybe get in touch with uh, experts uh, in the market and try to find out what exactly it is. So you have to just essentially go one level lower as compared to what you would do in a normal uh, equity fund. You have to go one level lower in the FOF and really see what this FOF will really do in its portfolio. Hmm. Now, certainly, uh, it seems, and I'll ask you that question about the international bit in, in a moment, because it seems that from a 
international investors perspective or taking an investment on the international side this is probably uh, the most lucrative option the only option so to say but just before that uh, um, i heard you mention that taxation is the debt taxation so rather yes. my question is if i want to take an equity fund exposure uh, yes is fund of funds a less preferred route simply because i don't get equity taxation i get debt taxation it's a it's a very valid point so if you have if you want and you're really fast about taxation then you should invest in a fund of funds which is putting all its money into etfs as the underlying scheme right okay. uh, if it, if you if you invest in a fund of fund which has exchange traded funds as its underlying then you get the benefit of uh, the equity taxation but having said that neeraj i think the key thing is here is uh, if you want i think many people uh, or many investors actually want a sort of a, a solution where they really don't want to know uh, where their what's happening to their money in terms of uh, they they don't want to track it and if i may put it this way so they have a very very long term horizon so they but they want diversification they want style diversification they want security diversification so at sometimes they may just decide to put money into a manager for example who is putting money into other equity funds right and then saying that you manage the whole thing you figure out how much i should take in an index fund how much i should buy a normal regular open ended large cap fund or a mid cap fund or a small cap fund so those are also Uh, there are a set of investors who are happy to forego that a uh, little bit of additional taxation benefit that you get by putting money into a pure equity fund and coming directly here let's not also forget that uh, earlier of course if you remember uh, some time back equity funds were completely zero tax today there is a 10% tax and uh, so and you know if it's if you're over 3 years you're at about 20% less indexation so the longer you hold your money the lower is obviously the tax rate so sometimes the difference in tax is not that significant like it used to be in the past what is in point um raga the other other obvious question that comes to mind uh, last couple of questions uh, is uh, and I, i mean the last question would be what are the on offers from the access side and um, what is the kind of exposure that one gets but just before that it seems to be obvious that on the international front if i want an international investment through access to whoever else uh you in turn will will invest arguably in a fund existing overseas so in effect uh my investments into any amc's international offering is effectively an investment to an fof would that absolutely. be absolutely most yes that's a, that's absolutely yes mostly okay and, uh, and because and very then, few because very few okay. fund managers neeraj have the ability to buy sell track research foreign stocks mm-hmm. sitting in india right and if you have it's the same logic of a mutual fund right i mean why are you entrusting an mf with money because we are supposed to be the experts we are supposed to be doing this on a full time basis most investors do not have the time uh, to really look at that on a daily basis the same logic applies in an fof internationally also right so what what uh, if i have capability sitting outside why should i go and reinvent that capability i might as well feed into that capability that's why you have call fofs which are feeding into other funds you know the the whole idea and this is something which retail investors keep asking me what is this feeding so feeding is nothing but when you put money into an fof that fof essentially goes and invests into another fund that process of investing in another fund is called feeding into that's it you got it uh, i heard you mention that at axis you have uh, showed us something and something else and something else what are the offerings uh, and and particularly on the international side since you guys have that association with shoulders what is the kind of Uh, offerings that you have uh, more so on the international investing side rather so we we did some we did some work uh, you know shoulders as you know is a very very large uh, preeminent global investment management company uh, with over a couple of hundred years of experience uh, largely in active management based out of london uh, they, the amc uh, access amc uh, they are part owners it's a, they have a joint venture with the bank access bank so we have access to obviously their a really top ranking funds and a lot of new ideas which frankly we we don't see coming into india for the immediate future so it's it allows the investor two things one is to obviously diversify his or her portfolio because the fact is that when you know we did this very interesting uh, set of funds where we had a 70% india exposure and a 30% global exposure and the, and the 30% global exposure we really went and bought instead of the fof we went and bought the top stocks in that particular scheme 
and we had a very very satisfactory experience so what it did to our investors was it gave you a much much better risk adjusted return rather than just putting money into uh, in, into a pure india equity fund uh, so that is obviously number one it uh, it really lowers your risk number two which is reasonably obvious is that there are mega companies outside i mean today the market cap of apple uh, is almost equal to the market cap of the entire indian stock market right uh, yes you can buy apple now sitting into india but yes there is as you know stocks are also a, you you have to have some expertise in both buying and selling so one is you get access to a whole list of uh, companies which are not traded or available to indian investors by investing in these number 3 which is very very critical is that you know the world is pivoting into new businesses right artificial intelligence electric vehicles uh, robotics uh, clean cities green energy these are again companies which are there in india but are there in a very very nascent stage so you will find a lot of these companies in the private equity space but not really in the public space and the world is uh, there are but this is uh, an old theme in the world in, in some sense we are in india now we are catching up but uh, these companies are now available abroad and listed and those offerings also are available to uh, to sec to to indian uh, investors lastly of course you have country specific funds also uh, you can buy into a us uh, large cap fund or a china large cap fund or a, or 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 a europe large cap fund so that's that's the other side of the business suppose you want to go and buy uh, a, a us uh, large cap fund yes i think that's available today through an fof structure too so these are essentially the three four big to, to me the big three reasons are mainly diversification uh, because a lot of these uh, things that we buy are available internationally are not going to be in india or not available in the size that we would like to have it or to a retail investor may not be available number two it's extremely convenient today yes there is you can go buy these stocks on your own i mean the the reserve bank of india does offer you the lrs facility you can go technically and go to a broker and pick up the stocks but it, it is there is a little bit of pain involvement i mean the, the process of investing has become simple but having said that the other things are not yet easy in the sense that which stock do you buy which stock do you sell how do you research all these stocks and things like that thirdly of course i think very importantly i think uh, the whole risk adjusted story is is really really important from an india perspective today a lot of our needs neeraj are, are directed to abroad right we have a fair if you ask most of uh, indian parents today especially and across not only urban i'm saying urban semi rural one thought in their mind is uh, either an international holiday or an international education or anything something to do internationally right so i think this investing abroad gives you that benefit because in some sense it's not exactly perfectly dollar hedged but it allows you to take benefit of uh, uh, you know some amount of the depreciation of the indian currency also mm -hmm. so i think uh, if you ask me uh, lots of good reasons to put money a very very beautiful way to do it uh, fund of fund is super simple i mean uh, it's an absolute retail fund you can come in with as low as 5000 rupees here Uh, you can set up an SIP. You can do everything that you do in a normal, regular Indian mutual fund can be done with an FOF. One thing that you must again keep in mind is that because we are investing in another fund, and the international payout cycles are a little different from what we follow in India. Uh, I must, uh, you know, you must. Uh, we must complement our regulator. A lot of the monies that are received abroad are not. I think our payment cycles are far far superior actually. so in that sense uh, we may be technically a developing market but a lot of our processes are actually way ahead of some of the international markets so your your in your outflow when it comes is not normally a t plus 3 neeraj that is t plus 3 means you get the redemption today normally in an indian equity fund you would get your money back within 3 working days whereas in a foreign fund it could be anywhere from maybe 3 to 7 days mm -hmm. depending on the scheme that you are in so and again which country you are investing in so that again please keep that in mind when you are investing in a fund and more importantly when you are redeeming because i have seen many people assume that since india pays in t plus 3 uh, fof will also pay in t plus 3 that is not the case normally because there is an additional leg of getting money from that international fund into india and then obviously we passing it on to the investor so that's the second caveat that i would like to just keep with you apart from the first one which i told you is that fof is a common word but it 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 covers a massive range of uh, massive range of investment sure. opportunities available sure raghav thanks for that thanks for these updates Thank and a lovely understanding this whole concept from you thanks for Thank the time you. today thank you neil thank you
Great. And again, have a great happy new year to all the viewers. Thank you. Thank you so much, Raga. Well, viewers, <laughs> so that's the view on fund of funds. You got a you got a lowdown from Access India. Of course, they have a bunch of offerings out there as well. But as would be the case uh, on every mutual fund show, we'll get you a perspective from somebody who is not a part of the ecosystem, but looking at it from an outside and trying to advise uh, his clients or her clients. And, and today's guest is Nirav Panchmatya of uh, AM Advisors. He's been on the show before. We need no introduction really. Nirav, good having you. Thanks for joining in. Um, Thank you so much. I don't know if you got a chance to hear most of the things that Raghav Hyander of Axis was talking about. Uh, yeah. But is there something that you would want to add to uh, why an investor should or should not choose the fund of fund options, uh, both on the domestic or the international side? Sure. And first of all, Nira, thank you for having me. I mean, it's, it's a pleasure to come on the mutual fund show. I think it is a very, very well, well designed uh, uh, show that I think every investor should have a. I mean, even today, I get to learn a lot from your past shows. So thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, I heard Raghav. Uh, I think one of the biggest advantage of a uh, international fund of fund, not necessarily a domestic fund of fund, is that you can avoid a home country bias. So Neeraj, I think, you know, be Indian domestic Indian investors, we are overexposed. When we see our net worth, if we have equity investment, whether through mutual funds or through share market, and then we have real estate, all these are INR assets. So even among our friends and families, if you do a survey, very few would be having, barring ultra HNIs, you leave them aside, but very few would be having uh, any international currency exposure. Nowadays, when we uh, most of our children are wanting to study abroad, or we some people are wanting to settle abroad, and there is no Indian who would not want to vacation abroad. In that case, having some form of a dollar asset is very important. So I think fund of fund gives you a, uh, you know, takes you away from a home country bias and takes you away from a single country exposure risk. Second thing, Neeraj, there is this very important statistic that I'd like to share that the MSCI World Index Fund uh, has statistically been proven to have a very low correlation to the Indian equity market. So they say that the, over a three, five, seven, and 10, and 20 year period, the correlation between MSCI World Index Fund and uh, Nifty total return index is only 0.4. So that means both these markets, the international market and Indian domestic market, very rarely, except for events, uh, Black Sun events like COVID and all, they very rarely they go down together or they go up together. That I think is a very, very important reason why one should have an international fund of fund. And another is currency exposure. So over a uh, 5, 10, 15 and 20 year period, again, it is believed that rupee has depreciated at a CAGR of 2.3% over a 20 year period against the dollar. Now, if I'm an Indian having any business interest abroad, or if my children are young and they are planning to move, uh, do education abroad, this currency depreciation itself will hit me a lot. That doesn't apply if they're planning to do an education in India. That also ensure, uh, you know, uh, asks me to have some international exposure via the international fund of fund. And it is, I think, one of the cheapest way to have an exposure to a, a US dollar denominated asset. Some uh, fund of funds like a US equity fund or a European equity fund, the day you buy that particular fund, your INR gets converted into USD at the current uh, US prevailing rate. And when you sell it three, five, 10 years down the line, your dollar INR will get converted on the prevailing rate on that date. So you're basically locking a US dollar asset. That I believe uh, are three main reasons why you should have international fund of fund. And Neeraj, one last major reason would be that there are certain themes He's still not available in India in mature markets like India. We are mature, but we are not as mature as markets like US. So there are these FANG stocks, Facebook, Apple, Alphabet, Google, uh, Netflix and all. Uh, I think it will be another 10, 15 years before you have product companies like uh, these in India. How do you get exposure to these stocks? Second, there are these R&D pharma companies uh, like Abbott, like uh, Moderna, like Pfizer. You don't have exposure to them here in India. Third, there are these AI ML companies, machine learning and artificial intelligence companies that even Raghav pointed out to. We will not be having these companies at least for another decade in India. So these are this is the last major reason why you should have an exposure to international fund of fund. Hmm. So uh, Nida, suffice to say that from your perspective, a fund of fund exposure should largely largely yeah. be taken if you want an exposure 
on the international side as a diver, as a tool of diversification of your portfolio am i correct so uh, so i mean more or less correct because i mean it is the cheapest uh, most economical and safest way to have exposure to international equity i mean having said that there are certain funds which are uh, domestic fund of funds which equally have a merit of putting money there although they don't give you uh, uh, they don't take you away from a home country bias or they don't give you a foreign exchange hedge but mm -hmm. these funds are wonderful products like there is a fund from icic provincial which uh, from time to time based on the expertise of the fund manager selects which sector exposure they should be taking the most and which they should reduce so a retail investor is not in a position to decide which sector whether to go for pharma or to exit pharma whether to go for financials so on and so forth so from that angle even that domestic fund of fund merits but predominantly a fund of fund uh, is doing a phenomenal this category is uh, doing a phenomenal job as far as international fund of funds are concerned got it okay uh, need of just one question because i read somewhere in the notes that you sent that there are may very few fund of fund options on the domestic side maybe which have equity taxation most of the fund i think is they have that debt taxation so can you talk a little bit about that yeah in fact to my knowledge neither there is only one fund out there one of the i proof funds a passive strategy fund which is having an equity taxation by definition a fund of fund whether domestic or international enjoys a debt taxation that is by definition but if a fund of fund has more than 90% exposure to domestic etfs which are equity etfs then that particular fund can enjoy an equity taxation right okay. now to the best of my knowledge there is only one fund which is enjoying uh, this particular uh, equity taxation but there are more funds which are in the pipeline got it any which and any which is i think as neera would tell you taxation should not be the principal reason for choosing yeah. in which case yeah. neera uh, yeah. uh we we had access of course talk about some of their offerings uh, but assuming that uh, for for a larger case assuming that uh, you choose a fund of fund option because you want to diversify on the international side and almost in fact a lot of fund houses if not all now have these offerings uh, yeah. have you been able to analyze some of the main ones and would you be able to tell us which of the fund of fund offerings are sure. best suited uh, are, are best uh, for a diversification perspective according to you of course sure sure need thank you so i believe you know uh, I, so everybody in india somewhere if he is an equity investor and even if he is not an equity investor you know we dream about companies like apple google amazon facebook and all and although now international demat accounts are getting opened in india but they have their own issues so i think one of the first fund that an indian retail investor should invest via the fof route is a nasdaq fund so there are many companies like kotex and motilal oswals of the world which have a nasdaq 100 or an s&p 500 fund i think nasdaq is one such uh, index internationally which is very innovative completely tech based and it has many companies uh, the likes of which are not available in countries like india so one of the first recommending i would uh, recommendation i would give is a kotak nasdaq 100 fund of fund or a motilal oswal nasdaq 100 fund of fund now if you want to go one step ahead and if you say i don't want to have the entire index the nasdaq index but uh, you know i want to have only the fang stocks so there's a beautiful offering from the fund house of mire known as mire asset nyc fang plus index now the beauty about this neeraj is that this particular fund only invest in 10 fang stocks so which includes alphabet uh, your amazon apple uh, even and there are two chinese companies alibaba it also invest in uh, netflix and uh, nvidia the uh, chip company and we know that there is a huge shortage of chip nowadays abroad and uh, internationally so nvidia stock is doing phenomenally well this particular fund is one of my favorite another fund that i would recommend is icic pro global advantage fund uh, i'd like to mention a few uh, seconds on this particular product uh, neeraj it's a wonderful product it is a fund of fund in its true sense it invest in five different geographies uh, etfs uh, funds worldwide so it invest in a uh us based fund it invest in a europe based fund it invest in a brazil based fund and it invest in one more geography in a japan based fund an ex japan fund and from time to time it keeps on rotating this product and reduces or increases the weightage based on the valuation parameters so that's a unique product you know when we want to invest in a fund of fund 
the first question that uh, flamux is an investor is whether i should go for us or for brazil there's a problem of plenty even in fund of funds that problem has been taken care of by this particular fund so that would be another fund that i'll recommend another would be a edelweiss us tech fund of fund it invest in us based companies which are tech savvy again this particular theme is yet to arrive in india we are seeing some platform companies being listed but the universe is too small so these would be some of my recommendations neeraj thank you all um neeraj uh, this was insightful in more ways than one and thank you so much for your time as well as your insights today uh, sure. and from all of us uh, much appreciate your time pleasure thank you for having me neeraj a pleasure talking yeah. to you likewise and viewers thanks for tuning in to this edition of the mutual fund show